For the second day, police attacked young opposition supporters gathering to protest against an election they believe was rigged. The protesters fought back, setting fires and skirmishing with police in full riot gear. Our camera had to stay hidden behind a storefront grill as the police were chasing and beating anyone they could catch. This is what we were allowed to film today, the massive victory rally by President Ahmadinejad, where thousands of his core supporters turned out, mostly working class people who really believe that he is a man of the people. No one in this crowd doubts the election was free and fair. And as for the violent demonstrations, state television has told them they're a foreign plot. At a press conference, President Ahmadinejad likened the protesters to football fans who overreacted when their team lost. They're not important, he said. Mohsen Mirdamadi, an opposition strategist, was one of several people arrested last night. Three days ago, he told CBS News there'd be trouble if the reform candidate Musavi lost. The main problem is, is that the people can't accept this is a real result. You they know, won't believe it. They don't believe it, yeah. More than 40 million Iranians cast ballots on Friday, and election officials said President Ahmadinejad won 62.6% of the total. But angry opposition candidates are dismissive, pointing out Ahmadinejad won even on their own home turf. Issa Saharkiz, a party organizer, says officials at polling stations have told him they were told not to bother finishing the job. They said we have enough votes to uh, uh, forget about uh, counting the ballots. Tonight, in spite of heavy police presence, demonstrations and clashes continue in the streets of the capital. The young people are wondering where the man they hope would lead them is. The defeated opposition candidate, Mir Hussein Musavi, hasn't been seen since election day, and there are rumors that he's under house arrest, although he has posted a, not a notice on his website saying that he's asked Iran's powerful clergy to nullify the results of the election. Anthony? Liz, you've spent a lot of time in Tehran over the years. Does it look like this time the opposition movement, the dissenters, are not going away? My opinion is that the dissent, the overt dissent you're seeing now, will die away because it's, they're just completely outnumbered by the police uh, and, and, and the secret police. Uh, but there's no doubt that, that, that there's huge suppressed anger, and that's not going anywhere. Elizabeth Palmer in Tehran. Thanks. For some help understanding what's next, we turn to a leading expert on Iran, Trita Parsi, president of the National Iranian American Council. Good evening, Mr. Parsi. Good evening. Mr. Parsi, to start with, we just heard from Elizabeth Palmer in Tehran that we have not seen the opposition leader, Mr. Musavi, today. What do you think will happen to him? Well, no, I think what is happening right now is that those in opposition who were trying to unseat Ahmadinejad essentially were without a plan. They were not ready for a situation like this. So for the last 48 hours, they've been in meetings and trying to come up with a plan, scrabbling for a plan uh, to see how to uh, best address this issue and see how they can reverse this. If these protests persist and in fact even grow, how do you think the, the government is going to deal with this? Well, I think the government counted, potentially, that they would be able to quell this very quickly. I seem to have detected that in the press conference that Ahmadinejad gave today and the speech that he gave, he sounded a little bit defensive to me, a little bit nervous, perhaps not uh, expecting that this would drag on and that the opposition would show such determination to uh, challenge the results. Do you think there's likely to be some kind of a compromise here? There could be a compromise. There's a lot of wheeling and dealing in the background taking place right now. And there's a lot of rumors being spread uh, that this person has given up, this person has caved in. And it turns out that that seems to be part of the psychological warfare that the two camps are fighting with, uh, are using to fight each other with. Trita Parsi, thank you for joining us from Washington Thank you so tonight. much.